Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Good evening teacher. How are you? Good evening, teacher. In Good, class evening. Meet. Good evening, teacher. Hi. How are you? Everything okay? Everything okay. Great. Okay, I'm happy to hear that. All right, let's begin. We have to, well, we have a review today and also, um, well, we need to finish the unit or the section, let's say. So just give me a second as I set everything for the class. And um, I'm going to start sharing the screen with you. There it is. Can everybody see the screen I'm sharing? Yes. Yes. yes Excellent. Sure. Thank you for confirming. Um, first things first, I'm going to call the attendance. All right. When you hear your name, please let me know. And everybody, thank you for being here. OK, uh, I know it's Friday. Normally, we don't study on Fridays, but today um, and the next Friday, we're making an exception because of the Monday and Tuesday from this week. We couldn't start. So um, the first person, Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. Alejandra Cristina Magaña Campos. No? OK. Astrid Michelle Flores Escobar. Present. Thank you. Carlos Alfredo Ramos Aida. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. Claudia Yanet Iraeta Martinez. No. Ever de Jesús Candray Montano. Present teacher. Thank you. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Gabriela Stephanie Cortez de Martinez. Gladys Imelda Sánchez, ya la vi por ahí. I'm here, teacher. Okay, thank you. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa Juárez. Yasmín Vanessa Sosa Juárez. Jose Luis Hernández Flores. Present. Thank you. Um, Josué Isaías Najarro Martínez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Lilian Estela Portillo García. I'm here. Thank you. Luis Fernando Enrique Herrera. Present, teacher. Thank you. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Olivia Emanuel Osorio Panameño. Present teacher. Thank you. Paola Maria Alvarado Cerón. Present. Thank you. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Rosa Esmeralda Hernández de Flores. Sandra Cecilia Munguía. Sandra Cecilia, escuché una voz por ahí, pero no escuché. Ok, ok. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Walter René Quintanilla González. Ahí, lo vi. ahí está. Thank you. And finally, Jenny Maritza Sánchez Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, alguien que no haya escuchado su nombre, que tal vez se incorporó. Alejandra Magaña dice, vamos a ver, Alejandra. Alejandra Cristina Magaña. Ah, aquí, aquí estamos. Alguien que tal vez se incorporó después que le haya llamado su nombre, por su nombre. Alguien que no haya escuchado su nombre. Tenemos aquí el chat. Claudia y Anet. Ok, Claudia, me. Janet. Me. Who's me? Jasmine Vanessa. Ok, me. Jasmine Vanessa. Thank you. ¿Alguien más? Why am I speaking Spanish? I have to speak English. Anyone else? 
No one else. Okay. Somebody just joined. Alguien se acaba de unir. ¿Quién, quién, quién es? ¿Quién se acaba de unir para ponerlo en la lista? Vamos, participantes. Um, creo que no. Ok, igual, pasamos al final la asistencia nuevamente. Ok, so um, let's begin. Sorry. Let's begin. This is English Avanzado, Pre Avanzado, I'm sorry, Módulo 2. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. Once again, everybody, good evening. And this is session number three. Today is January 20th of 2023. Okay. So, what are we going to do? Take a look. First, a review. Okay. Very important. We have to review the contents. Grammar focus, describing problems. Part two, okay, remember, these are the expressions that we will use when describing problems and possible solutions to those problems. So first we have keep and gerund. Keep and gerund is a structure that you can use to complain about something or to express that there is a problem with something around the house or at, at work or in any other similar situation. Take a look, you say everything keeps burning, okay? You use keep, or keeps, and then a verb in ing. The alarm keeps going off, okay? It's a problem right there. What about the solutions? Very simple. If everything keeps burning in the oven, you can use need plus a gerund and say the oven needs adjusting, okay? Or you can use need plus a passive infinitive. The oven or it needs to be adjusted. Okay. If the alarm keeps going off, then using need plus a gerund, you can say the alarm needs fixing. Or using need plus a past participle, you can say the alarm or it needs to be fixed. Okay. Needs fixing or needs to be fixed. So that's the first part of the review. Then again, this is need plus passive infinitive and need plus verb in ing. So you can use need to talk about things that should be done. Like this, the TV needs to be fixed, okay? The screen needs to be adjusted. So you say need or needs and then to be all the time because this is the passive voice and the passive voice always uses the verb be. So the TV needs to be fixed the screen needs to be adjusted. You can also use the verb in ing, need plus the verb in ing. It's the TV needs fixing, the screen needs adjusting. I think this form is easier. So the structure need plus verb in ing, this one right here is mainly used for everyday chores like fixing, changing, cleaning, adjusting, replacing, recharging, etc. Nothing new right here. This is what we studied yesterday, what we studied last night. So this is your turn. This is a very personal exercise. Write true answers. Well, you don't need to write them. If you want to write them, it's okay. But if you just want to express your answers, it's also fine. You have to use need plus the verb in ing or need plus a passive infinitive. Okay, I want your participation right here. What is something in your home that needs cleaning? You say, oh, the toilet needs cleaning teacher. Or you can say, I don't know, the curtains, well, they need washing probably, but they need cleaning as well. So what is something in your home that needs cleaning? Lilian Portillo. Yes, the refrigerator needs to be Cleaned. Okay, good. The refrigerator needs to be cleaned. Okay, good. Or you can say the refrigerator needs cleaning. Very good. Okay, thank you, Lillian. Anyone else? Question number one, because I want more people to answer the same questions. We have more to say. So question number one, Carlos Alfredo, what is something in your home that needs cleaning? Uh, in my case, uh, the floor of my house near this cleaning okay the floor of my house needs cleaning okay good it needs sweeping and mopping okay good thank you carlos very good one more person number one 
What is something in your home that needs cleaning? Gladys. Mm, the windows of my house. Okay. Need to clean. The windows of my house need cleaning. Okay, good. Yeah, also the windows of my house need cleaning. Hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Um, somebody's writing here on WhatsApp. Okay, I get it. All right, uh, question number two. What is something, just let me check. Somebody told me they won't be able to be here. Okay, I have to register the attendance here. Okay, number two. What is something in your home that needs to be tightened? Necesita ser apretado. So what is something in your home that needs to be tightened? My brain. <laughs> your brain? Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> is that no, you? No. I know, I know. So uh, what's something in your home, okay, that needs to be tightened? For example, in my case, you know, the frying pans that I have, las cacerolas, right? The frying, the frying pans that I have, sometimes the handle comes loose. So I need to tighten it with a screwdriver, okay? So that they can be firm again. So what's something in your home that needs to be tightened? What can you say? One person only, come on. The tabs are the the door the doorknobs. What please? Okay, the doorknobs. Okay, can, can you complete the sentence? The doorknobs need. What please needs needs tight needs tightening. Okay, so if I understand correctly, you said. The door knobs need tight, uh, tightening. Okay, the door knobs need tightening. Okay, yeah. Also, the door knob in this room it needs tightening. It it's in horrible condition, by the way. It's just horrible. Okay, very good. Thank you, Olivia. All right. What about question number three? What is something in your home that sometimes, sometimes needs to be adjusted what's something in your home that sometimes home sorry that sometimes need to needs to be adjusted volunteers please Lilian Portillo the the signal of the TV needs to be adjusted Okay, you can say in simpler words, the TV signal. Mm -hmm. Okay. The TV signal needs to be adjusted. Okay, good. Thank you, Lilian. Um, anyone else? What's something in your home that sometimes needs to be adjusted? Sandra Cecilia. Uh, my, my chair needs, needs to be adjusted. That chair you're sitting on right now? Okay, all right. So yeah. the, the chair needs to be adjusted. Okay, okay, yeah, true. Luis Fernando and then Carlos Alfredo. Okay, Luis Fernando. Our washing machine needs to be adjusted. Okay, our washing machine needs to be adjusted. Okay, good. Thank you, Luis Fernando. Carlos Alfredo. Yeah, I have a question for uh, uh, I mentioned uh, example, an example, three or or two. Number three, question number three. What is something in your home that sometimes needs to be adjusted? Hello. Earth calling Carlos. Do you copy? Carlos, can you hear me? Yeah. 
Creo que tenemos un problema ahí de audio con, con Carlos. The audio needs to be adjusted. <laughs> okay. Well, um, sorry, Carlos. Uh, I can't hear you. Can, can you hear Carlos? Or maybe it's just me. Can anybody hear him? Yeah, I, I know. But not Carlos. But not Carlos. Oh, okay. Um, well, maybe there was a problem right there. Okay. The audio needs to be checked, needs to be adjusted. Okay. So, um, what about number four, everybody? What is something you own, algo que usted posee, something you own that needs to be recharged, except your phone? Para que no me van a decir todos, my phone, teacher, my phone needs to be recharged. Porque no todos me van a decir lo mismo. Okay, so what is something that you own that needs to be recharged? Gladys. And then Paola. My laptop needs to be recharged. My laptop needs to be recharged. Okay, yeah, mine too. Paola Maria. Uh, my clocks need to be recharged. Your clock. Is it your clock or your watch? Uh, your watch. It's uh, the clock, the alarm. Ah, uh, the alarm clock. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Alarm clock. The alarm clock needs to be recharged. Okay, okay. All right, thank you, Paola. Someone else? What's something you own that needs to be recharged? Jasmine, Vanessa. My earphones. Okay. Uh -huh, my earphones, complete sentence. Need to be recharged. My earphones need to be recharged. Okay, good. Very good. All right. So, uh, my mosquito zapper, you know, that racket thing. My mosquito zapper needs to be recharged all the time. Okay, number five. What is something you own that needs replacing? You need to buy a new one. So what's something you own that needs replacing? Josue Isaias. Uh, my, uh, my mouse needs to be replacing the batteries. Your mouse? Ah, yes. the batteries. Okay, the batteries, batteries. in your mouse. Okay, not the yes. mouse. Okay, all right. So the batteries in the mouse need to be re need replacing. Okay, okay. Thank you, uh, Carlos Alfredo. Uh, my computer needs to be replaced. My computer needs to be replaced. Okay. <laughs> all right. My car needs to be replaced. You know. Thank you, Jasmine, Vanessa, and then Gladys Imelda. Um, my washing machine needs to be recharged. I Rechar needs to be replacing. <laughs> oh, replaced. Okay. Or, or you can say my washing machine needs replacing. My okay. washing, my washing machine needs replacing. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Uh, Gladys Imelda. Uh, my headset needs to be replaced. My headset needs to be replaced or my headset needs replacing. Okay, very good. Everybody, thank you for your participation. Okay, that is great. So what's next? Okay, um, we did this yesterday, by the way, uh, the walls need painted to be painted. By the way, we're not going to go over this because we did it yesterday. So um, you have the pair work, which is think of five improvements you would like to make in your home. Which improvements will you most likely make? which one you make. We don't need to do this because this is basically the same activity we just finished right here, okay? So we don't have much time. And also I would like to explain um, the pronunciation of past forms and past participles of regular verbs in the, uh, so I'm going to set aside some time for that. So um, what do you have? By the way, give me a second. Over here. Oops. Um, just give me a second. Something went wrong. Ooh. Okay, we're back. So this is word power electronics and this is the knowledge check 1.8. So complete the sentences using the correct form of keep plus the correct form of the words in the box. Then compare with a partner, more than one answer is sometimes possible, okay? 
So what are you having number one? My computer is driving me crazy, okay? What happens with the computer? Just to give you an example right here, the first one, it keeps crashing, okay? It keeps crashing. You see the blue screen and then the computer restarts. So your computer keeps crashing. You probably need to get a new one. You, the computer needs replacing. So what about number two? The first one was an example. Number two, the buttons on the remote control always stick. They always stick. What can you say here? Using the verbs in the box. Sandra Cecilia. They keep jamming. They keep jamming, correct. Okay, they keep jamming. Se quedan trabados, okay? They keep jamming. What's the meaning of it? Okay, good. Um, here we go. The next one, please. That used CD player often jumps to another song. What happens? Jose Luis. It keeps skipping. It keeps, keep, sorry, uh, skipping. It keeps skipping. <laughs> it's hard to pronounce. <laughs> okay, keep skipping, keep skipping. Okay, I have to say it correctly. Keep skipping, keep skipping. It's hard to say. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Number four, very good, Jose Luis. Thank you very much. Number four, our new flat screen TV has a problem. What's the problem with it? Who knows the answer or a possible answer because there may be more than one problem to it. Gladys Imelda. Keeps breaking down. It keeps breaking down. That is correct, okay? It keeps breaking down, all right? Se sigue arruinando, o se arruina. Okay, keeps breaking down. Very good, thank you. Number five, those old cell phones never work right anymore. They are too old. So they... What is a possible problem right there? Mm -hmm. they they keep break breaking down they keep breaking down is possible okay although uh, when you say break down is se arruinan okay o se averían so they keep breaking down normally if you have a phone that keeps breaking down you probably replace it Maybe uh, there's a different problem with the phone. Usually it has to do with the battery. I mean, it's a good answer, but there is a better answer. So what can you say? Mm -hmm. Any other possible answer, Jose Luis? They keep going dead. They keep going dead. That is more like it, okay? Se apagan solos. They keep going dead, all right? Yeah, that happens to all the electronics. Thank you, okay? Number six, sometimes Ed can't use his solar power calculator. Mm -hmm. What's a possible reason? Carlos Alfredo. It keeps overheating it keeps overheating it's possible it's possible that a calculator overheats i guess if it's solar powered maybe <laughs> okay keeps overheating it's possible okay although i believe there's a better a more appropriate answer the one that i have right here is it keeps breaking down okay you can say it keeps going dead it's also possible okay that can happen, or just like Carlos said, it keeps overheating. That happens. That that happened to an old computer of mine. It kept overheating. In the end, it went dead completely. Number seven, my computer screen needs to be replaced. It. What 
What do you have? What's wrong with the computer screen? It's Sandra easy. says, uh, uh, who's, who's speaking? Olivia, <laughs> Olivia, uh -huh. so, okay, Olivia? It keeps freezing. It keeps freezing, that's right. Okay, very good, correct answer, Olivia. Solo, siempre si levantamos la manita. <laughs> Pero excelente respuesta. It keeps freezing, okay, good. What about number eight? The answering machine never picks up any calls. Never picks any calls. What happens to the answering machine? Any ideas? No ideas? Okay, I'll give it to you keeps going dead, okay? Remember that more than one answer is possible, sometimes they repeat. Um, some vocabulary, take a look at this. Lesson objective, this is 1.9. Participants will learn vocabulary for discussing things that can go wrong with electronic items. And um, I want you to take a look at this. Match the verbs in the box with the pictures. Please match the verbs in the box with the pictures. What about the first one? What is the problem right here? Okay, Carlos Alfredo. There is a computer which is uh, which, uh, which keeps breaking down probably it keeps breaking down i guess it's possible although um let's talk about the screen a bit what about the screen right now i just want you to identify what the problem is the problems are breakdown crash flicker freeze go dead jam overheat and skip so what do you think that is Maybe Carlos yeah. is right, right? Maybe it's a uh, breakdown, but there's another one. Gladys Imelda. Crash. Crash. Closer, but not there yet. Oh, go dead. <laughs> go dead. I don't think so, because you can, see, you can still see the screen. Walter René. It keeps freezing. Keeps freezing. Okay, yeah, that's right. The problem is freeze which means stop completely, normally used for computers and computer screens, okay? If the computer, if the image on the screen doesn't move at all and nothing responds, then the computer is frozen, okay? That's right, very good. What about the second one right here? You see this lamp right here, Jenny Sanchez? It's a problem. Flicker, that's right, okay? Flicker, flashing on and off, just like that lamp right there. It's flickering. Okay. Thank you. What about the third one on the right? Mm -hmm. Always remember to raise your hand. Sandra Cecilia. Go dead. Go dead. Yeah, that's right. Okay, go dead means stop working completely. Okay, it won't turn on, it went dead. Very good. I had a small projector. It was a projector, very small, like this. Okay, I used to, you know, use it for my classes a long time ago, but it went dead. And no matter what I do, it doesn't work. Okay, very good. Thank you, Sandra. What about number four? Carlos Alfredo. A skip. Skip. Mm, no, sorry. It's a different one. Or go. S second opportunity. Go dead. Go dead. Go, dead. Uh, go dead was the previous one. We cannot repeat them. What is that? You see the paper right here. There is a problem with the paper. What is it? 
maybe uh, Jenny Sanchez and then Astrid Michelle. Jenny Sanchez? Jam. Jam. That's right. Jam means not moving. Okay. Por eso las trabazones se llaman traffic jams. No me mueve el carro. Okay. Very good. Um, Astrid Michelle, number five. It's difficult Keep. to, uh -huh, but yeah, <laughs> a little bit difficult to identify because the picture is not very expressive. But yeah, it's skip, moving from one place to another suddenly, mostly with players. It, they go from one song to the next or from one section to the song of the song to the next. So that's skip. Thank you. What about the next one? What is it? Carlos Alfredo, do you want to participate? Your hand is up. No. Um, who knows the answer? What's the problem in the next one? Ask it, Michelle. Crash. It's, that's right, it's crash. Crash it's, means failing, used for computers. Okay, computer crashed. Very good. What about uh, the next one? What is it? Jasmine Vanessa. Overheat. Overheat. That's right. Overheat means heating too much. Yeah, that's a problem. If it happens to your computer, it will go dead. If it happens to your car, it will also go dead. Okay, thank you. And the last one, what is it? Carlos Alfredo. Breakdown. Breakdown, that is correct. Which means suddenly cease the function. There you go. You have different problems, things that can happen to your electronics. They can frizz, flicker, go dead, jam, skip, crash, overheat, or break down. All those are possible. Very good. Okay, now um, let's continue. There is the next section, which is a listening exercise, and that's uh, section 1.11, okay? We're close to finishing the unit, and then we're going to have a lesson on pronunciation. So uh, listening, repair jobs. Listen to three people talk about their job, complete the chart. So what does this person repair? Hmm, I lost it, okay. What about Joe, Luis, and Sam? You have to tell me what each of these people repair and what is the typical problem, okay? Uh, please take notes. I'm going to play the track twice. If you need to listen to it one more time, I can play it again. But uh, for the moment, I'm just going to play it twice. And after that, I want you to give me, give me the answers, all right? I'm going to play it. Please let me know if you can hear it. Listen to three people talk about their job. Could you hear that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. great. Girls. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm going to play it twice. Please listen, take notes, and then tell me the answers. All right? Complete the chart. One, Joe. I work in the watch repair center at a large department store. I repair all kinds of watches, but nowadays, most of them are pretty easy to fix because they all run on batteries. The most common problem is they need a new battery. Since that only takes a minute or so to fix, I always have plenty of time to tell my watch jokes, like this one. What time is it when an elephant sits on your watch? Time to buy a new watch. And here's another one. What time is it when the big hand is on the... Two, Louise. I repair luggage, mostly suitcases. I have a little shop at the airport. People spend a lot of money on luggage, and often all it takes is one flight for a suitcase to get damaged. The most typical problem, I guess, is the wheels. 
I fix the wheels on about 20 suitcases a week. It's not surprising, really, with the way those baggage handlers throw people's luggage around. You'd think they were playing ball, the way they toss the suitcases. 3. Sam I repair household appliances. The most frequent calls I get are from people who are having trouble with the garbage disposal system in their kitchen sink. Usually, the thing gets jammed because people put too much food into it at one time, or something metal or plastic has fallen down into it. It's usually pretty easy to fix a garbage disposal, but every once in a while, you run into situations that aren't exactly typical. One time, a little girl put her doll down into the disposal. She thought the doll would enjoy the ride. She couldn't get it back out again, and she was afraid to tell her mother. So when the mother went to use the disposal, it made a horrible noise and then died. And so did the doll. Okay. All right. I'm going to play it a second time. Just give me one second here very quickly. Um, okay. Just a second. All right. So second time. Listen to three people talk about their job. Complete the chart. One, Joe. I work in the watch repair center at a large department store. I repair all kinds of watches. But nowadays, most of them are pretty easy to fix because they all run on batteries. The most common problem is they need a new battery. Since that only takes a minute or so to fix, I always have plenty of time to tell my watch jokes, like this one. What time is it when an elephant sits on your watch? Time to buy a new watch. And here's another one. What time is it when the big hand is on the... So what does this person repair? Joe, what does he repair? Jenny Sanchez. Watches. Watches. Okay, very good. And Jasmine, what is the typical problem with watches? Um, the watches are easy um fix. They are easy to fix. Easy to fix. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that is true, but um. But what is the typical problem they have? Let's see, Sandra, Cecilia. They need to, they need a new ba ba battery. Yeah, they need a new battery. Yeah, that's right. They need a new battery. Okay, good. Luis Fernando, you go for the next one. Okay, I'm going to play the uh, number two, which is Luis. Everybody listen. I'm going to pause the track and we're going to check answers. Here we go. Two, Luis. I repair luggage, mostly suitcases. I have a little shop at the airport. People spend a lot of money on luggage, and often all it takes is one flight for a suitcase to get damaged. The most typical problem, I guess, is the wheels. I fix the wheels on about 20 suitcases a week. It's not surprising, really, with the way those baggage handlers throw people's luggage around. You'd think they were playing ball, the way they tossed the suitcases. So, uh, Luis Fernando and then Lillian. Luis Fernando, what does this person repair? What does Luis repair? The luggage. Luggage, that's correct. Uh, Luis repairs luggage. And what is the typical problem with luggage, Lillian? The wheels. The okay, wheels, okay. the wheels of the luggage. Correct. Okay, this is a typical problem. Typical problem. Thank you. Number three. This is the longest part of the track. Uh, Luis Fernando, uh, do, do you have? Oh, okay, no. <laughs> Jenny Sanchez, do you? Oh, well, no, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. All right, Jenny, uh, do you have a question? Uh, no, that, that the third. Ah, you want the third one. Okay, okay, good. We're going to listen to it a second time and then you can take it. And then Gladys also. All right. Three, Sam. I repair household appliances. The most frequent calls I get are from people who are having trouble with the garbage disposal system in their kitchen sink. Usually, the thing gets jammed because people put too much food into it at one time, or something metal or plastic has fallen down into it. It's usually pretty easy to fix a garbage disposal, but every once in a while, you run into situations that aren't exactly typical. One time, a little girl put her doll down into the disposal. She thought the doll would enjoy the ride. She couldn't get it back out again, and she was afraid to tell her mother. So when the mother went to use the disposal, it made a horrible noise and then died. And so did the doll. Okay. So, uh, Jenny, what does Sam repair? Household appliances. Uh, appliance. Household appliances. Okay. Appliances. Mm -hmm. Los electrodomésticos. Household appliances. Okay. Very good. Gladys Imelda. What is the typical problem? Uh, garbage disposal in the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm. But what happens to it? That is true. Okay, the problem is with the garbage disposal at the kitchen sink. But what happens to it? Mm, they are tasked with, with the garbage or mm -hmm. they keep say about a doll. Okay, he talked about a doll. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Um, the answer is the garbage disposal gets jammed. Okay, or it keeps jamming. We can say gets jammed in general. Okay, very good. You know what keeps getting jammed is my PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Um, we're going to do something because of the time, okay? Um, I, I want you to do this in your, in your house as homework, and that's the reading section, okay? The reading exercise, which is 11.12, that's part of the um, exercises in the platform, too. I want you to take a look at it. Where is it? Over here. To zoom out a little bit. which is here, reading exercise. This is the last one. So I want you to read the text and please answer the questions right here. That's going to be homework. We were going to do it here in class. However, yesterday you requested um, a short class on how to pronounce the past forms of regular verbs. Well, no va a ser falta el tiempo, pero lo vamos a intentar. Okay, just give me a moment. I need to go back to this. Okay, this is the pronunciation of the ED endings of regular verbs. First, we need to know if the sounds are voiced or voiceless, okay? Now, there are two different kinds of sounds in English. Some are voiceless and some are voiced. But what is the difference? It's easy. Voiceless or voiced, you can feel it if you touch your throat with your hand. Voiceless, when you make a voiceless sound, your throat doesn't vibrate. If you touch your throat, everybody, take a look. Use your hands, you touch your throat. While you're speaking, you're going to feel some vibration. Say something. Your microphones are off, no problem. So say something, say something in Spanish or in English, and you will notice that your, your throats vibrate a little bit. They vibrate, okay? What about, that's that's when the sound is voiced. But sometimes uh, your throat doesn't vibrate. Why is that? Because the sound you're producing is voiceless. Now, what are the voiceless sounds? Voiceless sounds don't produce vibration because your vocal cords on your throat don't vibrate. Therefore, your voice is not produced. Now, if you have noticed, maybe you have seen these symbols in the dictionary. 
Okay, this is what they call the international phonetic alphabet. These are not letters. These are graphic representations of sounds. So this is not a P. Mm -mm. That's not a P. This is the sound. That's the sound. Les invito a que traten de hacer los sonidos en su casa con el micrófono apagado, ¿verdad? Para que no sientan, digamos, eh, pena o vergüenza, ¿verdad? De hacerlo públicamente. Okay, this is the sound. That sound is voiceless. There's also the sound. It's a voiceless sound. There's also the sound. This sound also. Now, if you touch your throat, everybody do this. Touch your throat and do the sound. Do you feel any vibration? No, there is no vibration because this is a voiceless sound. No voice, no vibration. Another one. Have you heard how the people from Spain say shoe? They say zapato, right? In El Salvador, we say zapato, but in Spain, they say zapato. That sound at the beginning, as in zapato, when they say in Spanish, this is this one. This is the sound, another voiceless sound. We have this sound also. If you touch your throat, you will feel no vibration. It's a voiceless sound. There's also this one right here. It's the sound. Like when you're telling someone to be quiet, say shh. Another voiceless sound, no vibration. And there's the sound, shh. like when you're calling a person, hey, shh, shh, shh. okay, that's this sound right here. All these sounds are voiceless, no vibration is produced. That's part one. No se preocupen, no tienen que reconocer estos símbolos para entender lo que vamos a explicar después. Some examples include keep, it ends, the verb keep ends with p. Complete ends with t. Fíjense bien en algo. Estas no son letras, son representaciones de sonidos. Así que podemos ver que este verbo termina con ese sonido, mas no termina con una letra t, ¿verdad? Complete. That's the final sound of the verb. Kick. Kick. The final sound of kick is k. laugh. Laugh. The final sound is unearth, which is like desenterrar. Unearth ends with the sound kiss. Kiss ends with the sound s. Finish. Finish ends with the sound sh. Watch, watch, ends with the sound ch. Todos estos verbos, que son regulares, <laughs> terminan con estos sonidos. Mucho cuidado, tengo que recalcar esto. No se trata de la letra con la que terminan. Se trata del sonido con el que terminan. Esa es la clave. Ahora van a decir, teacher, usted no dijo que iba a explicar cómo se pronunciaba el id de los verbos regulares. ¿Qué tiene que ver esto? Tiene mucho que ver. Ya van a ver por qué. Si no sabemos esto, no se puede hacer. Okay, because of the time, we're going to go over these. These are the voice sounds. Aquí hay algunos de los sonidos, algunos, no todos, de sonidos que sí llevan voz. Voice sounds. What about this one? This is the sound B. B. You can hear my voice. B. B. Because it's voiced. Rub. Rub. So you have rub. It ends with the sound b. Also, there's the sound d, d, as in decide, decide. Si se fijan de nuevo, termina en una e, pero no es la letra con la que termina la que estamos buscando. Es el sonido con el que termina. Decide, d. Flag, flag, ends with the sound g. What about this sound? V. 
It's like a cell phone when it's vibrating. Now, everybody, do me a favor. Touch your throat and do this sound. Do you feel some vibration on your vocal cords, on your throat? There is some vibration because this is a voice sound. Okay? That's the vibration right there. Así podemos reconocer si un sonido es voiced o voiceless. Si es voiced, va a sentir una vibración. Si es voiceless, no va a sentir vibración y además no se va a escuchar su voz. So an example of this is love. Love. You have the sound at the end. Love. The next one, bathe. The sound is bathe. Then you have the sound z, z, as in amaze, amaze. There is a sound z, z, as in damage, damage. Z. And there's the sound j, j, as in dodge, dodge, esquivar. Todos estos verbos que están acá terminan con un sonido que lleva a la voz, voice sound. Ahora, ¿de qué nos sirve saber todo eso? Ahorita les digo. We're running out of time. We have very little time. So, let's go. ¿Qué va a pasar acá? Fíjense muy bien. La terminación, o sea, el ED, de los verbos regulares depende enteramente de el sonido final del verbo en su forma base. De eso depende. En otras palabras, depende si el verbo termina con un sonido voiced o con un sonido que es voiceless. Y eso va a determinar cómo vamos a pronunciar el ed. Ok, veamos, vamos a comenzar acá, donde dice unvoiced es lo mismo que voiceless. Tenemos el sonido p como hope, hope. De nuevo, mucho ojo, termina con una E, pero eso no lo estamos buscando, estamos buscando el sonido con el que termina, hope. P Ese es un sonido que es voiceless. Cuando el sonido final del verbo en su forma base es voiceless, entonces el ed usted lo va a pronunciar de esta forma que está acá. Lo va a pronunciar así, hope en pasado se pronuncia hoped. Ese ed se pronuncia hoped. Y este sonido es el que usted va a incorporar siempre que un verbo regular, regular, perdón, en su forma base termine con un sonido voiceless. Por ejemplo, aquí hay otro. Voiceless sound. No voice, no vibration. You have the verb laugh. Laugh. Usted dice, ¿en qué termina ese verbo? El sonido. Voiceless sound. Ok. Eso significa que el ED se pronuncia. So what is the past of laugh? Who can help me? ¿Quién se anima a pronunciar? Who wants to pronounce this? Gladys Imelda. Laughed. Correct. Ok. Laughed. Así es. Laughed. Very good. Then you have the sound. As in facts. Facts. Final sound, s, voiceless. So the ed is pronounced t, faxed. Also the verb kiss. Dar un beso. Kiss. The final sound is s, voiceless sound. So the past is kissed. Kissed. Another example. Wash. Wash. The final sound is sh. A voiceless sound. Shh. What is the rule? The ED is pronounced t. 
So what is the past of wash? Who, who can tell me? ¿Cuál sería el pasado de wash? ¿Cómo se pronunciaría? La misma regla. Jenny. Washed. Washed. Correct. Then you have watch. Okay. The final sound is ch -ch, another voiceless sound. So the past is watched. You have the verb like. Like. The final sound is like. Voiceless sound. So the past is liked. Liked. So again, the rule is if the verb in base form ends in a voiceless sound, then the ed is pronounced t. Next rule. Pero qué sucede cuando es lo contrario? Cuando el verbo en forma base termina con un sonido que sí lleva la voz, que sí produce la vibración. For example, the verb play, e, e, you can hear my voice, e, and if I touch my throat, e, there's some vibration produced. This is a voice sound. Cuando el sonido final del verbo en forma base es voiced, entonces el ed se pronuncia d, d. Ese sería. Así, play. En pasado es played. Allow. Ow. Ow. Voice sound. Ow. There's vibration and you can hear your voice. So the ED is D. D. Allowed. Allowed. There is the verb beg. Rogar. Beg. The final sound is g, g, g. It's a voice sound. You can hear my voice and I can feel the vibration. G, g, g. So, the past form is begged, begged. One more example. There is the verb love, love. The final sound of love is v. Mm. That's a voiced sound. There's vibration. So, how do you pronounce the past form of love? Volunteer. ¿Cómo sería? Walter René Quintanilla González. Love. Correct. The past form is pronounced loved. Así es. Con este sonido, d, loved. Very good. Now, those, there are three rules. Those are two rules down, one more to go. Pero qué pasa en caso que el verbo ya de por sí termine en este sonido, en el sonido t, o en el sonido d. Veamos un par de ejemplos acá. You have the verb, let me see, decide. ¿Qué pasa con el verbo decide? El sonido final es D. Es un voice sound. Y decimos, ah, bueno, pero la regla dice que si termina en un voice sound, entonces el ID se pronuncia D. Pero ¿cuál sería el problema? Que tenemos el mismo sonido repetido. No vamos a decir decided. Eso suena muy mal. No vamos a decir decided. Eso no existe. Lo mismo sucede con un verbo como complete. Complete. ¿Cuál es el sonido final? El sonido final es... Es un voiceless sound. ¿Qué decía la regla? La regla decía, ah, bueno, entonces si es un sonido voiceless, entonces el ED se pronuncia... T. Pero ¿cuál es el problema? Es el mismo sonido. Entonces tendríamos um, un verbo que se pronunciaría complete. T. Y eso suena muy mal. Entonces, ¿qué sucede? Si el verbo ya de por sí termina en el sonido D o en el sonido T. Entonces, se pronuncia de esta forma. Perdón. Id. El ID se va a pronunciar id. Así el pasado de decide es decided. 
El pasado de complete es completed. Y así. That's rule number three. More examples. Want. Ya termina con el sonido t. Así que wanted. Wanted. More American. And. And. Ya termina con el sonido d. Por lo tanto, para que no nos quede ended, vamos a decir ended. That's the idea. Y esa es la forma en la que se pronuncian los verbos regulares en pasado y el past participle, como es igualito, ¿verdad? Es lo mismo. Ahora bien, probablemente lo que estén pensando es, puchica, qué difícil esto. O sea, tengo que estar analizando cada verbo regular que se me atraviese y ver si termina en voice sound o voiceless sound. Y luego tengo que estar pensando si el final va a ser d, va a ser t o si va a ser id. Qué complicado. Y los entiendo porque cuando yo aprendí esto, lo mismo pensé. Pero con la práctica, a uno le va saliendo esto sin pensar. Así que mi recomendación es practíquenlo, practíquenlo mucho. Lo que sí eh, eviten a toda costa, por favor, es pronunciar ed. Ese sonido ed para el verbo en pasado no existe de ninguna manera. ¿Verdad? Así que no. Ese sí evítenlo. No van a decir wanted, ended, hoped. No, no existe ningún sonido de eso. Sería wanted, ended, hoped, laughed, faxed, washed, watched, liked, played, allowed, begged, etc. Okay. But you need to do this little by little. You need to practice this, okay? The more you practice, the better you become, okay? Quiero que me disculpen por haberme pasado español por tanto tiempo, pero eh, tenía que explicar esto, eh, petición, ¿verdad? Día de ayer. Y por el tiempo, pues, consideré que era mejor hacerlo así. Pero bueno, hay yes, que hablar teacher. en inglés. Yes. Gladys? Thank you, teacher. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> Ya saben, para servirles. Okay, I'm here to serve you. All right, listen, um, I want you to uh, finish, please, the exercise, which will be the reading part. Finish it in your house, okay? On Monday, we start section number two, okay? I'm just going to call the attendance one more time. I'm just going to call the names of those who didn't um, respond the first time. Gabriela Estefani. Cortés de Martínez. Ok, thank you. Manuel Aristides Murcia. Manuel Aristides Murcia. I don't see him. Manuel Aristides Murcia. No. Ok. No, no está en la lista. Ok. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And I know that it's difficult to be here on Friday. Okay. You're tired. I understand. <laughs> okay. But thank you. Remember, next week, we will have classes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and also Friday for the second time. But that's going to be the last time. All right. Then in uh, the following week, the week after that, it's going to be Monday to Thursday, and then Monday to Thursday to finish. Okay. So thank you very much. Okay. And I'll see you Monday. Enjoy your weekend. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Thank you so much, teacher. You're welcome. You, teacher. A pleasure.